Hi everyone, this is Ryan Reagan, the founding partner of HTXL. So today I'm going to share with you the top five tips I have for IB students, okay? Because I used to be an IB student myself. I got 40 out of 45 after failing middle school, right? So I was considered a miracle student. After graduating from IB, I started HTXL IB specialist with my partner. And then in the past uh, seven years, we have helped over 6,000 IB students in our classes, okay? So today I'm share with you the top five advice I have. And I'm sure if you're starting IB, if you're going to your second year, these tips are going to help you tremendously. So the first advice I have, also I believe it's one of the most important advice, is that you need to set your priorities straight. You need to prioritize the IB when you're an IB student. So let me tell you a very interesting story, hang in there. So one day there was this professor, he brought a jar, a big glass jar to his class, okay? And then he started to fill in the jar with rocks, big rocks. Okay, so the jar looks filled. He asked the class, is this jar full? The, the class said, yes, it is. But then he added more pebbles into the jar. So pebbles, small rocks to fill it. And then he shook, shook the um, jar and the pebbles fill in the open areas, right? And then, so the, the jar even became even more full. And then he asked the students, is the jar full? And then the students said, oh yeah, of course it is full, right? But then he added even more sand into the jar and the sand full of the remaining areas. So the professor then told the class, okay, so I want you to look at the jar as your life, okay? The rocks are the most important things. The pebbles are the less important things and the sand is the unimportant things, right? So for example, the rocks may be like your family, your career, right? The, the pebbles may be like uh, some high by friends, right? And the sand's probably entertainment, right? So there are different priorities. So the point here is that if you fill in the jar with the sand first, you can't put the rocks in, right? The only way to fill in the jar like this is to put the rocks first before the pebbles, before the sand, right? So this story just shows you in life, you need to do the prioritize the most important things, right? And I believe as an IB student, your IB result and working hard towards your IB goal is most likely the most important thing you can do. So during the two years when you're an IB DP student, uh, you should prioritize your studies, okay? Like your studies is definitely more important than, than your sporting achievement in most cases, right? Uh, your IB is so important because it decides where you go for university, right? So if you get like a terrible IB score, like maybe you can't even get into university or you get into a very lousy one. But if you get like over 40, then you can really get into the top universities, right? Like LSE, Cambridge. If you get into the top universities, you're, you, have, you have so much more career opportunities, right? Like the people around you will be high achievers as well. So like if you get into a top university, your life really opens up, right? It opens doors, right? So it really makes a huge difference to the rest of your life, your IB results. So the second tip I have for you is about goal setting, right? So imagine your life as a journey. Your life is in fact a journey, right? So if you want to have a meaningful journey, you need to have a destination, right? You need to know where you're going, right? You can't just walk around, wander around. If you just wander around, waste your time, you're not gonna have a meaningful journey, right? So in your IB, this is why you must have a clear goal, a clear direction. It's like having a destination in your life, right? Now, so you should set a very specific goal. Like for example, I would have to get 40 out of 45, okay? The more specific the goal is, it's like the more, the more clear it will become to your mind. You know where you're heading, right? That's very important. The second point is that when you're heading towards your goal, so imagine you're in this desert, you're heading to a destination. You're heading, you want to go to the top of the mountain, let's say. So there is definitely a lot of obstacles. Maybe there are lakes, there are trees, there are rocks, right, in between, right? So you're, you face a lot of obstacles on your way to your destination, right? This is inevitable, right? So now, when, you're, when you face into those obstacles, right? Like, let's say you see a lake, you may not know how to swim. You get a rock, you don't know how to climb over it, right? So there are all these difficulties, right? it is very easy for you to want to give up, right? Because you see, oh, oh crap, there's this difficulty. Why don't I just head back? Why don't I just go around? Why don't I go to somewhere else, right? But if you want to achieve your goal in the IB, let's say if you want to get 45 out of 45, you cannot give up, right? If, because once you give up, you're not gonna achieve it, right? So you need to have persistence, right? You need to have motivation. So how do you have motivation? Well, I think there are two things. First of all, you need to remind yourself of the goal every day, right? So this keeps you, this helps to give you, keep, keep you motivated. But more importantly, you need to have reasons behind your goal. So you need to know what is the reason why you want to achieve such a great result for IB. So for example, when I was an IB student, 
I, I really wanted to do well for two reasons. First, I wanted to prove my teachers wrong. I wanted to show them, oh, I was this capable student. The second objective is I wanted to have a great career, right? So I knew that, oh, if I did well in the IB, I, it doesn't automatically mean I'm gonna have a great career, but at least it would give me a head start and that's very important, right? So you need to know the reasons behind your goal. Your goal needs, needs to mean a lot to you, right? And you need to know what are you willing to sacrifice. Okay, so you, for example, I, when I was an IB student, I sacrificed a lot of entertainment. I sacrificed practicing football, right? Um, so the point here is that when you have this motivation, when you know what are your reasons behind your goal, this is how you persist. This is how when you got bumped into obstacles, you keep going. Okay, this is very important. So the third tip, and also what I believe is one of the most important tip, is about deliberate practice. So in the past decades, scientists have wanted to find out. So what, it what does it take to become a master? Why is Mozart such a great musician? For example, why is Federer such a great tennis player? Right? So what makes the difference? And after decades of research, scientists believe that it comes down to two words, deliberate practice. Okay, so I'm not making this up, you can search this on Google or whatever, there's a lot of scientific research on this. Okay. And um, so the same goes for your study. So if you want to do great in IB math, if you want to do great in IB English, the key here is deliberate practice. Okay, so it's the same as to why Vedder is such a great tennis player, right? So what's deliberate practice, right? So deliberate practice, there are a few components. First, it needs, it's purposeful practice. So it's a goal-oriented practice. So in the IB context, so let's say you're studying differentiation. Okay, so if you're doing deliberate practice, maybe today, and tomorrow, your goal is to master integration by parts, okay? So it needs to be purposeful, okay? Each of your studying session needs to have it, needs to be purposeful, it needs to be focused, okay? So during your studies, you have to zone out, okay? You can't turn on Facebook, you can't listen to music. It's better not to listen to music. Music is okay sometimes, but then you need to be very focused without distractions, okay? So. What I recommend for students is that you put away your phone, just have your books in front of you, focus for at least one hour, okay? Don't get distracted because once you get distracted, you lose your train of thought, your efficiency is gonna drop, okay? You need to get focused. This, the third point is you need to get feedback, right? So let's say if you're, if you're doing math questions, you need to know whether you're getting the right answer, okay? So, so if you, for example, if you do practice integration by parts and you practice exam questions and you find out you're, you need to, if you know you're getting the wrong answer, then you need to know, oh, what are you getting wrong? Okay, you need to find, figure out your mistakes. Okay, and you keep improving yourself after you find out your mistakes. So this is deliberate practice, right? And even better, during the process of the deliberate practice, if you can, if there's a mentor for you, like a tutor, then the tutor can tell you, can help, first of all, set up the practice for you and they can give you feedback, okay? Teach you how to improve. This is very important. Yeah, but the key here is deliberate practice, okay? So keep this in mind. The fourth tip is about subject selection because I, I get a lot of questions from students asking, oh, what's, what subject should I do in the IB, right? So actually it's a very easy answer. To, so to select a subject, first you need to know what, you're, what you want to study in university. So let's say if you want to study economics, okay? So you need to find out what are the, IB requirements to study economics. So to find that out, you can simply search on Google. Okay, so for example, if you, if you want to study LSE, you can search LSE economics IB requirements. Okay, then you can find out uh, what are the requirements. So like for example, for economics, I believe the IB requirement is that you need to take math higher level, right? So this is what, so you definitely have to pick math higher level. But besides that, you can pick any subject you want, right? So that, what I suggest to students is that you want to pick the easiest subjects for you, okay? So, so for example, when I was an IB student, I chose Chinese B, I chose chemistry, biology, because I believe these subjects, these electives are the easiest for me. I felt most confident in them, right? So there's no point to challenge yourself to take high subjects, I believe, right? Hard subjects, right? Because it's just, you just, it, it is just making life more difficult for you, right? Because the IB is, it's difficult enough as it is, right? So why don't you just pick the easiest subjects that fulfill the university requirements? Very, very simple. Okay, this will give you the biggest advantage. Okay, the last tip I have for you is about getting a tutor for subjects that you're weak at, okay? Because everyone has weak sub have weak subjects. So for example, when I was an IB student, my weak subjects were 
IB English and IB Biology, right? I absolutely hated these subjects, especially English, okay? So if I studied English on my own, like I get very, very depressed and um, and I just didn't get it, right? I didn't understand the literature work. I, it, it, it doesn't make sense to me, right? But I, after I got a tutor, the tutor really helped me. Like a great tutor is supposed to help you to, first of all, give you confidence because it, it, they can make a subject interesting to you. So let's say you hate math now, but if you if you come to our center and have a lesson with our IB math tutor, you'll become interested in it because our tutor will make it easy for you, right? We'll teach you tricks to make the subject easy for you. And that's how you get confidence. You overcome that mental barrier. And secondly, our IB tutors can set up, can teach you how to do all sorts of IB exam questions in a systematic, uh, in a systematic way, right? So this goes back to the point of deliberate practice. After, so in the lesson, we'll teach you how to solve all the types of questions related to this topic. And then after going home, you can practice doing these questions, right? And then the, and then you check your answers and that would be a very great form of deliberate practice, right? So a great tutor is about saving your time because if you figure out everything on your own, if you find all the resources on your own, there are six subjects in the IB, you probably will run out of time. So this is the value of our IB experts. We'll save your time dramatically because we will give you the resources you need and also break down things to you in a very simple way. Okay, so I hope to see you in our standard soon. We have some courses coming up so you can register for a trial lesson in, our, in the link in the description or you can DM us on IG. Okay, so I hope you find that this video is useful and hope to see you soon.